Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to store images in your database. Well, not the actual images, but the file name, the path and file name. But we're going to put it in a subfolder under your database folder. In case that database folder moves in the future, you won't have to deal with broken links. Let's talk about it. Today's question comes from Wesley in Plantation, Florida, one of my gold members. Wesley says, I'm following the example that you showed in your images video on how to store the full path and file name of an image in the table instead of storing the picture itself as an OLE object or an attachment. And it works great. I love it. However, my company just upgraded computers and the folder the database is in has moved. Now I got all these image locations that are pointing to the wrong place. How can I fix this? Well, Wesley, we'll talk about fixing your specific situation a little bit later in the video, but for now, let me explain to everyone else what we've done and how to do it better. Okay, the video that Wesley is talking about is this one. It's my images video. It's one of my more popular videos. And in a nutshell, I show you how you can store image data in your database. You store the full path and the file name in a text field right? You don't want to store the image itself in the database, like in an attachment field or an OLE object field. These things were okay in the past, but they really make your database bloated and big. And Microsoft Access databases were not designed to store binary data like this, any kind of file attachments. It's bad. Watch this video for a more in-depth description of why you don't want to do this stuff. So what we do is we add a profile picture field in our customer table. And then we stick the profile picture field on our form so we can type in where the, 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 the image is, right? The path and the file name. And then we put an image object on the form. And then when you type in the image's full name like that with the file name, the image appears in the form. Okay. And this is great if your images are always stored in C users, Richard desktop images. Okay, that's the problem Wesley's having is they recently upgraded and that folder location moved because he's storing it on a server. The database folder is still up on the server, but it's in a different path. So the way we can resolve this is by simply making this a folder that's relative to the database folder. So if the database folder moves, then the images folder is going to move with it. Now, in addition to this images video, which you should go watch first before watching this video, I want you to also go watch this video on concatenation. It's putting two strings together. Okay, these are both free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so here I am on my desktop, but this could be anywhere. This could be your database folder on a server, or on a different machine, whatever. I've got a DB folder. That's where my database is going to be stored. And under here, I've got an images folder with some different images in it. Okay, these don't, these don't matter right now. Let's go back to the database folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the pictures in my database, but we're going to just tell it that the images folder is always under the current database folder. Okay. How do we do that? Well, let's set it up real quick. Let's repeat what we did in the images video. Just real quick. Be a good review for you guys. Customer table, design view, come down to the bottom. I'm going to add profile picture. Don't use picture or image or any of those simple reserved words, right? Those are reserved words. Be careful. All right, this will be short text. That's fine. Save it, close it. Let's go into the customer form, right click design. Just for the purposes of class, we're going to get rid of the stuff we don't need. Let's get rid of all of this stuff. And let's bring in that field. So form design, add existing fields, profile pictures right down here. Let's drop it there. Close that. I'm going to slide this over here. All right, profile picture right there. Make it fit. It doesn't need to be as big as before because we're not going to have to put a full path in here. All right, let's drop the image here. So don't use this one. Come into here and use this one. All right, and then click and drag where you want it. It's going to ask you to browse to where you want it. Just hit cancel. Okay, let's give this thing a name. Let's call it uh, profile picture object or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. All right, now the important thing is setting its control source. So the control source is gonna be this profile picture, but we're only gonna have the file name in here. 
the folder is going to be something we're going to specify right in the control source itself in here. And here's what we're going to put. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hit shift F2. I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Now, normally, if you were going to have your images folder, let's say in the, in the, the, the database folder on your C drive, right? You could put in here equals and then in quotes, C colon backslash database backslash images backslash and then the file name, which we can then concatenate with profile picture. Okay. If this is a physical occasion, you could use this, for example, if, um, if your images folder is not necessarily in the database folder, you could put maybe you, you know, you're up on a file server here. You could put Z or whatever the path to your database images folder is. Okay. Now, if you want to use the images folder that's under your database folder, we're going to replace this with current project dot path and then an ampersand. All right, current project dot path is the path, the folder basically, that your database is in. So we're going to take that, add images to it, and then put the profile picture field at the end of that. So now in the profile picture field, all we have to store is just the file name. Now, of course, this assumes that all of your images are in the same folder. Or if you want to put subfolders under this, you could. You could just have, you know, A slash whatever. All right, I'll hit OK. And one more change I like to make when I'm working with this, I like to go here, go to the form properties and under other, I'm going to make the tab cycle current record. That way, when I hit tab past this, it doesn't go to the next one. It goes back to the first field of this record and it just stays on here. That's one of my preferences. OK, all right, save it, close it. Let me open these up side by side so I can see what some of these file names are. OK, so let's go in here. And for this one, I'll put in jjj.gif and I'll hit tab. Boom, there it is. See that? Because the full path to that is determined in the control source for this control. All right, let's go to someone else. Here's James Kirk. That is, what is that? Test.jpg tab. There he is. Let's go back to me for a minute. Okay, there we are. These are animated GIFs, by the way. Um, note to the access team. Sammy, add this to the list. It would be nice if Access could display animated GIFs in forms, right? Because he's supposed to be laughing here. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's do Captain Picard. I've got Picard.gif. There they are. <laughs> I love this one. If you're not familiar with these, this is the Picard one. I love these are hilarious. Here's the JJJ one. I put this one on someone's post on like Facebook when they say something ridiculous. And, of course, there's Kip from Napoleon Dynamite. This one isn't animated, but oh well. Okay, so you get the point, right? Now, the point here is if, for some reason, this folder moves, it doesn't matter. As long as this stays under the database folder, you're good. Okay, or, or if you want to specify your folder instead of using the current project.path, you could put in here Z colon, whatever. And then if your folder does move, all you have to do is change it in here. You don't have to go through changing all these fields. Okay. Um, one more thing. If you want a button that you can click on right here to browse for that file. So this thing pops up to this folder, then you can click this and hit okay. And then it puts that picture in there. I do cover that. That is in the extended cut video for the original images video so go check that out you click a browse button little dialog box pops up you stick that right in there now wesley for your problem specifically in the extended cut i'm going to show you how to go through if you've got full paths in here right i'm going to show you how to go through and get rid of them so all you are left with is the file name and of course if all of your images are in one folder then you just point the image control to the new folder and then you'll have just the file names in here we'll do that with a special update query that'll be in the extended cut for the members silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and of course wesley i know you and i have emailed back and forth so i know you're pretty cool and you're a star trek fan like i am and i have to do it at least once but shut up wesley <laughs> all right that's gonna do it for today wesley i know you appreciate my sense of humor <laughs>
<laughs> but that's going to be your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And Wesley, I'll see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. 
you'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.